Welcome to picturesque Field New Sydney, boasting magnificent Sydney Harbour, internationally renowned attractions, the world's best beaches, stunning World Heritage listed Blue Mountains and a circuit that has previously hosted MotoGP international competition, Sydney Motorsport Park. Thanks to Destination New South Wales and the New South Wales Government, this weekend we have 3.93 kilometres of technical floodlit fury that will challenge Australia's best riders as round two of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul gets underway with the only night round of the 2024 season. For this round's Ducati track preview, something completely different. Normally, we would go for a walk around the track. This time, we're going to unleash Steve Martin on the brand new Monster SP for a lap around the circuit. Chris, what should we be looking forward to here at Sydney Motorsport Park, a fantastic venue? Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic track, great venue. It's iconic in the fact that it used to hold the 500 Grand Prix races back in the day. I think Steve Martin might have even lined up in one of them. But um, tonight we're racing under lights. We've had practice in the daytime. So that changes, adds another element to it. So it'll be interesting to see what Steve thinks. Well, Steve, start your engines, let's go. with Ducati around this track, especially heading into this turn one. It's super fast and you've got to be super accurate. Getting on the apex on the inside there, hard on the gas. And I'll tell you what, this monster's not a race bike, but it certainly feels like one. Plenty of torque. Down in the modal corner, off the brakes hard. You can see the lights on in the background. It's going to be dark later on, but it's not at the moment. Knee down on the ground. Use the torque of that bike out of that turn and into turn three here at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park, it's blind through here. Then you go up the hill, another blind crest, and then down. Super important at the bottom of this one to get the brakes nice and tight. Keep that uh, momentum through the corner and stay tight on the exit. I've seen people drift wide there. You don't want to do that. Then it's the run up the hill. And up the hill we go through Yamaha corner all the way out to the edge of the track. Another blind crest. And once again, it's difficult to know when to get on the brakes. Watch for overtaking into this one. It's super critical. It's tight through here. Then up you go, round the hill. This is one of my favourite parts of the track, the Yamaha Financial Services. You can see how blind it is as you head into there too. All the way around, keeping that throttle on. Twist the throttle to the stop before you can actually see where you're going. And then again, hard on the brakes into the famous turn nine. You've got to be careful you don't high side out of this one. See how tight it is. It is super tight. Up the short, Michelin straight, tucked in behind the screen we go. And then into the fast flip flop. Through the gearbox we go into the right hand corner here and then it's a quick flick over to the left. You know you've got this right if you drift all the way out and I'll tell you what, that feels super nice on this bike. Last corner, important to keep that roll speed up as we head out onto the main straight here at this Sydney Motorsport Park and I tell you what, this is a track that I really enjoy and I cannot wait to see the racing here tonight. Well, Steve, how was that? How was that? And tell us about the Ducati. I mean, it's just come off the showroom floor. What was it like? I can't believe how these things are nowadays. I mean, the amount of torque that this bike has, um, the amount of fun I had riding it, it's such a fun bike. Yeah, you're the lucky one. We had to stand here and watch <laughs> you. So. But also, too, Steve, this track is also a great track to come and ride your road bike on as well, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. It's a great place to come for a ride. Um, there's such a, a variation of corners here. You're always on the edge of the tyre. Um, you need a, a bike that's got uh, good grip and good feel. Luckily for me, the Monster's got that. Well, been a fantastic Ducati track preview. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Let's get the racing underway. Well, welcome to Feel New Sydney as we get ready for the Michelin Supersport category race number one for round two. The riders are making their way down onto the grid now. And, uh, well, the thing that was missing from round one, Steve Martin, was Tom Taparis, the two-time champion in this category. But he's back, and he's back with a vengeance at Sydney Motorsport Park. I think there's only been one session so far this weekend that uh, Tom Taparis on the stop and seal racing Yamaha YZF-R6 has not topped the timesheets. But here is your grid. Tom Taparis, Mark Chiotto and JJ Narlos start from the front row of the grid with Sean Condon, Hayden Nelson and Jake Farnsworth rounding out row two. 
Row three starts with Ollie Simpson, the South Australian. Corey Snowsill, welcome back. Tom Bramich, uh, he's had a bit of a rough weekend with a gear shift issue. Jack Favell is out of row four. Archie McDonald and Jacob Hatch in 12. Yeah, a couple of riders have got a lot of overseas experience there. Multiple Australian sidecar champion Corey Turner leads up row five with Jack Mahaffey and Glenn Nelson. Marcus Hammond, Brandon Demery, the two uh, men from uh, Wollongong on row six, along with Luke Sanders. Hunter Ford on row seven. Simone Boldrini next to him in position number 20. And Christian O'Donnell, 21st. Row eight is Noel Mann, Luke Johnson and Cooper Roontree. And the final row of the grid, Steph James and Jeremy Huddlestone. As we get ready to go racing, Steve, for the Michelin Supersport category. Race one here at round two of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul. And this one, if we thought that Superbike was hard to pick the race winner, this one's going to be hard to pick because we know Tom Tapara is fast, but there's so many other riders that are so close to his lap times. As you pointed out before, a very good point. One small hiccup from Tom and all of those riders will be more than happy to take up the lead. Massive field. 26 starters in all, Phil. Supersport is back in a big way in 2024, Steve. As the riders pull up on the grid now. As we mentioned, we've got three brands of tyre, three brands of motorcycle on the first two rows of the grid. The Supersport Championship is looking healthier than it has in uh, many, many years. On that front row of the grid, we've got the two Yamahas and the Honda of Mark Yado in the middle. Two Yamahas and a Kawasaki on the second row of the grid as well. We've got Pirelli, Dunlop and Michelin. We've got an Australian's multiple Australian sidecar champion, multiple riders with overseas experience as we get ready to go racing for the first time. Being held for a long time. Michelin Supersport is go. Great start for the second row of the grid. That was the rider in third position, Sean Condon, that's got a blinding start. He'll be in position number two as they make their way through Sydney.com corner for the first time. Oh, a couple of riders out very wide there as they make their way through that corner and head towards Motul for the first time. Mark Kyoto with work to do there, but round the outside. Is that Nolas who's just whipped into the lead, taking over from where he left off at Phillip Island? Yeah, Taparis relegated back to second place. I think uh, Jake Farnsworth has also got a, a pretty good start as well. The field makes its way across the top of the hill and down in towards Ducati Corner. Where has Taparis gone? He's gone all the way back to seventh position, Steve. So not the oh, best start now. Did you see that? Oh, we got a big one in the background there. Yep, that was one rider down definitely on the way out of... Uh, That's Luke five. Sanders. That's Luke Sanders from, from uh, Upper Beaconsfield. Uh, unfortunately for him, the Victorian, it's over before it started. Well, there's the race and road machine making its way out of turn six and up towards uh, Alpine Stars Tech Air Corner. So it's JJ Narlos that leads from uh, uh, Sean Condon. It's the two, that's the three Sydney men. Jake Farnsworth up into third place as well. Crazy Jake doing a great job. Simpson out wide at the hairpin at uh, Michelin Corner there. On board bike number 45, he's uh, tucked in behind Tom Taparis, who's made his way from seventh as they came through the first sector, up into fifth position now. As uh, JJ looks like there's a red flag, JJ just put his hand up in the air. That's a big one for the man from Upper Beaconsfield. Yeah, unfortunately for Luke, uh, it's all over. Let's hope he's OK from that. Uh, looks like he's up. Maybe there's something on the track. I don't know, because I saw that uh, Tom Taparis, he also had a bit of a slide there. Yep, yeah, but uh, he had gone way back as they came out of turn three for the first time. So I'm not sure what was happening there for Tom as the riders are making their way back down onto uh, the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance uh, Superbike Championship start grid. Jonathan Narlis won't be too happy about this, but I'll tell you what, Tom Taparas will be happy, and especially Mark Chiodo, he'll be happy because his start was atrocious. How was the start from Sean Condon? Well, he might be the most experienced rider, but he's certainly got plenty of experience in getting that Yamaha R6 off the line. There is no better place to start your destination New South Wales experience than in beautiful Phil New Sydney. So much to see and do in Australia's biggest city, from the mountains to the coast, it's all happening here. For more information, go to sydney.com. So through Dunlop and back round onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start, finish straight we come. Full restart of Michelin Supersport race number one from Sydney Motorsport Park. This is round two of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul. To Paris, one of the first riders back along with uh, Farnsworth there on board bike number 49. 
Crazy Jake's going to get a little bit crazy in these first couple of laps, I think, because he probably sees his chance now. You can see Mahaffey back there on board bike number 37, one of the many, many stop and seal machines. I think there's five bikes out there, stop and seal sponsored machines. Tom DeParis on pole position is also on one. There's Condon on the, uh, the all black bike biz, dig biz machine back there on row two. You can see Ollie Simpson's yellow machine back there on row three. The start line, Sam, leaves the front of the grid. Michelin Supersport, restart of race number one, ready to go. Supersport is go, much better start for uh, Paris in this one, but Condon's got another cracking start, Steve. Look at the black lights sl sliding its way through the field as they make their way through Sydney.com corner for the first time. Well, no one going as wide as what they did on the first start. Ollie Simpson's got a cracker. Look where he is, Steve. He's up into fourth. He's at third. They'll dispute that with Kyoto. He's up into third momentarily, but Kyoto's on the inside. But he's also now got the inside running for turn three. He will come out of here in position number three. And Narlos is back to fifth position. Yeah, not the start he wanted. Hayden Nelson, good start on the Kawasaki back there in sixth position too. Right on the back. But look at Crazy Jake. He has got that thing all over the place uh, right behind Hayden Nelson. Looks for a dive up the inside. Can't quite do it. Well, Farnsworth has not got a good start in the second row of the no. grid. He's got a lot of riders in front of him now, and he's also got Tom Bramage on the apex machine breathing right down his neck as well. Oh, oh. big dive up the inside there from Corey Snowsill. That was on one of the stop and seal machines. Couldn't quite see who it was. I think it might have been Archie McDonald on board bike number 69. Archie, of course, doing double duty here in Australia and also in the Spanish Championships as well. But I don't think that manoeuvre has paid off for Snowsill because he's back behind Archie McDonald now. He must have lost all of his drive no, up I, towards Alpine Stars corner. Yeah, I don't think he meant to do that. I think he went in there a little bit out of control and um, didn't work out. But anyway, all good. Bit of movement there from Ollie Simpson on the back. You can just see a bit of a bobble for him there. Mark Kyoto's uh, in that fifth position at the moment. So he got a decent start, but he's lost a couple of spots on this opening lap. Right, so two riders that we know have pace around here at Sydney Motorsport Park. JJ Narlos and Mark Yato sitting back there in fourth and fifth position as our race leader Tom Tapaz has opened up a 0.6 of a second lead on the first lap. It is Sean Condon. Well, he'd have to be in his late 30s, I'd say now, Sean Condon. And uh, he's run a fraction wide on the entry, but his experience gets the bike stopped and turned. He has a tight line on the exit of turn two. Gets a good drive through turn three. Simpson, and look at Marlos now, closing right up onto the back of the Simpson crash machine as they come across the top of the hill. Unlike the Yamaha R15s, these things are a bit of a handful as they come across the top of the hill. And Narlos, is he trying to set Simpson up there? Couldn't quite do it. Ollie was just too fast on the transition from four to five. Yeah, definitely a different animal to the R15, that uh, is for sure. But uh, Tom Taparis controlling this one. Sean Condon doing a, a fabulous job in that second position. And a uh, bit of a moment there for Jake Farnsworth as they head up the hill. Yeah, Jack Mahaffey and Tom Bramage have also managed to get ahead of Corey Snowsill as well. Yeah, not the start that... Um, those guys wanted, they had a lot of work to do to get through to the leaders up the front. And it is Holly Simpson who is uh, putting the pressure on at the moment. Well, Narlis had a big look up the inside of Simpson there. Simpson just turned the bike into uh, turn nine as they came out towards Michelin and just closed the door well and truly in his face. You can just see every time Ollie Simpson um, settles the bike to the left-hand side going into that Dunlop corner there, the back moves around a lot. Um, like it's, uh, I don't know, if I was the mechanic, I'd be putting a little bit more rebound on that. But anyway... There's Marcus Hammond having a good battle with uh, Brandon Demery there as well. Uh, of course, uh, Brandon Demery, a mechanic at Moto City. Marcus, and <laughs> Marcus Hammond on the Moto City entry. Of course, the race DNA machine for uh, Brandon Demery on board the Kawasaki. As we come down through into Motul now, it is still to Paris that leads, but look who's on a bit of a charge. It is JJ Narlos now up into third position, getting the better of Ollie Simpson. He's got his sights set on his fellow Western Sydney resident, Sean Condon. On board bike number 26. Yeah, but look at the gap. Tom Tapras has got 2.4 seconds. Where did that come from, Steve, in two laps? Well, that came from a 31.4, which is a pretty impressive lap time compared to the next fastest lap. Sean Condon, a 32.9. Looks like Condon is uh, slowing these guys down. In fact, it is Narlis who's made his way through. And it is a new lap record. 31-4, Tom Taparis showing everyone the way around this Sydney Motorsport Park. Well, he did say when Chris spoke to him on the grid that he's going faster around here than he ever has before. 
So uh, a good start for uh, Tom Taparis. But the big thing is, what can JJ pull out of the bag? He's up into second place now. Don't be surprised, though, if Sean Condon, Ollie Simpson, and possibly even the next rider back, uh, Jake Farnsworth, managed to... Uh, if Farnsworth can get up onto the back of the two behind... Oh, no, he's gone wide. He's gone wide on the exit of turn 11. And he's got no drivers. He comes out of turn 12. He's going to be... Uh, Claimed here, I think you'll find, by a flying Kawasaki 636 in the hands of Hayden Nelson, bike number 279, the BC Performance Machine. There's Richard Taparis giving his son Tom the good news that he's now got a 2.9 second lead. Yeah, that's a massive lead in such a short period of time. Um, 2.9 seconds, Tom would be pretty comfortable, comfortable with that. But what he needs to do is he just needs to consolidate and take it to the finish line. There's been too many times this year when he's just overstepped the mark. So let's hope that Tom can consolidate and bring this one home. Well, I'll give you an idea of how fast that lap was, that JJ Nardles just said his fastest lap of the race at 32.685. Taparis was almost a second slower on that last lap, but he was still 0.3 of a second faster than anyone else on track. Well, if you want to put it into perspective, in qualifying, uh, I think that pole position was a 32.2 from Tom Tapara. So he's smashed the qualifying time that they did uh, after spending the whole day yesterday trying to do the lap. In one lap, he's just done a second a lap quick. And his last lap of the race, which was slower than his fastest lap, was only 0.1 off his qualifying lap. Yeah. And we saw there the replay on the Ducati replay of uh, Jake Farnsworth getting it all wrong. That's uh, looking like a pretty good battle there with, uh, I think it was... Uh, Archie McDonald, Tom Bramwich, Marchiato, Corey Snowsill, uh, all and Jack Mahaffey all involved in that battle. Also, uh, Corey Turner. Ollie that, Simpson. That's Ollie Simpson down. Is that. Uh, that looks like. Whereabouts is that? Turn four by the look of it. Well, it's... that's uh, Ollie Simpson out of the equation. Yeah, that's the final corner, Steve, coming onto the, uh, onto the straight. So, uh, well, unfortunately, the Simpson crash machine has been crashed and looks like there's a fair bit of damage there that hopefully the Marshals can get that bike out of the way yeah, and uh, luckily I think the, uh, the Simpson crash boys will be able to get that bike uh, back up and running for the second race later on this evening oh we've got another rider down is that Nelson I think it's Nelson on board the Kawasaki yeah it is the BC that's... performance machine is out as well yeah unfortunately for him he's uh, he's uh, lost it um, he was just trying very very hard to get past and he couldn't quite do it but Hayden Nelson has uh, gone down look at that that is a seven bike battle there just trying to see where it is. That's probably from Jake Farnsworth all the way back. Jake Farnsworth in fourth position all the way back to Jack Favell in 11th, covered by uh, about two and a half, three seconds. And that's Corey Snowsill there. Yeah, Corey Snowsill's in the middle of that. There he is on the uh, the Team BWR machine. He's, he's not meant to be there. <laughs> Well, he's Corey just, still thinks he needs to be there. He's just breaking back into the sport. I mean, what is going on here? Him and um, Sean Condon, wow, these guys are flying. Well, the other thing is, though, too, that uh, he said he's been, Corey's been doing a few track days, but he bought a Kawasaki ZX-6 to do track days on. He's out there on a Yamaha YZF R6, and uh, he's made some radical changes, as we heard, for the grid. There goes Mahaffey down the inside of Kyoto. Can he get the job done? He does. So Mahaffey moves up one position into uh, eighth place. Kyoto back to ninth. Then we look back, Corey Turner rounds out the top 10 with Jack Favell in 11th, Marcus Hammond in 12th, Jacob Hatch in 13th, Glenn Nelson on board bike number 9, another one of the stop and seal machines is in 14th, Brandon Demery rounds out the top 15. I tell you what, watch out if um, Corey Snowsill gets a decent start because um, he's really come through the pack. Well, I think what he's showing is that uh, it doesn't matter if you've been away from the sport for a couple of years, if you've got the talent, you're going to be up the front in the Michelin Supersport category. And he's closing in now on Archie McDonald, bike number 69, in fifth position. With uh, We're on lap seven of lap nine. Time for another update from Chris. Yeah, thanks, Phil. I heard you guys just talking about Marcus Kyoto and, and going backwards a bit in this race. Now, the problem is electronics with the bike. So after that first start, they noticed that the traction control and the electronics on the bike wasn't working at all, and they were trying to get that sorted on the grid for the second restart. So um, doesn't seem like it's working, if you ask me, because he's still struggling with that machine. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And, I mean, that when all that sort of stuff happens in the handlebar thing on the grid, that just doesn't put the rider in the right mental state either. So Marcus Kyoto... Probably got three problems at the moment. His head, um, the handlebar thing. And his uh, hand. And his hand. <laughs> and the know, electronics. You know, so if, sitting in his position of ninth at the moment, that's that's not a bad result for him. But uh, they need to smooth out those problems to 
to make it easier. Well, talk about being under pressure. JJ Narlis, who was holding down second position, is under a lot of pressure because he's just been overtaken by the veteran, and I'm sure he won't mind him me calling him that, Sean Condon. Well, a very experienced veteran is Sean Condon. He's moved up now into second place. This battle for second is well and truly on. Taparis's lead is holding steady at 2.9 seconds on the last lap. Taparis was the only rider in the field in the 32s. He's rolling around at a 32.803. 32.9 for us, Sean Condon. 33.0 for JJ Nalos. Yeah, good job by Tom Taparis. Just cruising, like you can say. He's uh, definitely got this one um, under wraps, but these two guys, anything could happen there. Well, the thing is that JJ leads the championship by, uh, by a few points, so he probably doesn't need to go absolutely bonkers because the difference in championship points between second and third is only two points. If it was a battle for the win, Steve, different story. Five points of, uh, is the difference between first and second, but to pass at the moment has that one sewn up. This is the battle for second position and the last two places on the podium. Yeah. But look at this one. That is a... I've lost count of the amount of bikes that are still in that battle. Quick look over the shoulder there from Archie McDonald on board bike number 69. That's the second of the uh, stop and seal machines in this race. You've got Corey Snowsill, Tom Bramich, and uh, also uh, Jack Mahaffey on the third of the stop and seal machines closing in. Robbie Bolger will be doing a tap dance down in pit lane with the performance of his team in this race. Nalos tries up the inside. Steve can't quite get the machine uh, through there. Condon's experience showing through. Definitely got uh, not a lot of time left to do it, but Condon good on the brakes there and uh, closes the line off. Runs a bit wide, bit of a bubble there from uh, Nalos as well in the back and that uh, just gives a bit of air time to uh, Condon in second. Well, Bramich was trying to go up the inside of Snowsill there. Snowsill just let the brakes off and just rolled in there right in front of Bramich as uh, Archie looks like he's got a small gap over that uh, pack now that is starting to slow each other down. But this is the final lap. We're running out of corners for JJ Narlos to try and put a move on Sean Condon. This could be a uh, welcome return to the podium for Sean Condon here in front of his home friends at Sydney Motorsport Park. It's very, Out uh, towards Alpine Stars we go for the final time, Steve. It's very hard to pass around this track. He's got a couple of opportunities to do it. You can see Tom is just cruising at the moment. Up the inside here. Can't do it there as they go into the Honda corner. Under brakes there. Good drive out for Condon, and he's got a decent gap. The last opportunity now is either, there's two opportunities. Dive up the inside between the last two corners or slipstream down the straight. Oh, that was Mahaffey, I think, having a look up the inside of Bramich. Couldn't quite get the job done at Michelin. Right behind them is Jack Favell on board bike number 33 as well. And then you've got Corey Turner, multiple Australian sidecar champion in that battle as well. But this race is all about Tom Taparis. Welcome back to Michelin Supersport, two-time champion. You've just taken your first race victory for 2024. Second position will, in the end, go to, as they come down towards the line, Sean Condon by 0 0.058 of a second over JJ Narlos in third. Farnsworth will take fourth. And then we have Archie McDonald come across the line in fifth position. And then that massive gaggle of riders making their way through. What a race. New lap record, fastest lap of the race, and uh, first race victory for 2024 for that man there, Tom Taparis. And he is a two-time Australian Super Sport did champion. You, did you see the emotion in his face then? None. Like, that was just exactly what he needed to do. He was calm. And possibly what he expected to do. 3.384 seconds is the eventual winning margin over Sean Condon. JJ Narlos, as we said, in third. Farnsworth, McDonald, Bramich, Mahaffey, Favell, Corny, Corey Turner, and Kyoto eventually rounded out the top 10 with Marcus Hammond in 11th, Hatch in 12th, Demery in 13th, Nelson in 14th, and Hunter Ford rounds out that top 15. Good to see Luke Johnson making a big jump up in the results to 16th, 17th was Noel Mann, Cooper, Roundtree in 18th position. Well, what a great start for Michelin Supersport. Our top three have made their way down to the podium with Chris Vermeulen. Yes, thank you. I'm here with third place, Jonathan Nalas. I mean, fantastic round last time out, but it must, be, it must be really good to be back on the podium here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Yeah, definitely. Can't get much better than a podium. Um, uh, to be consistent like that, it's very important for the uh, overall championship and everything. Oh. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely taking oh. this as a win. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we can uh, find some more time to uh, challenge the other boys. Well, we wish you all the best. You've got another one. It's going to be under lights, so good luck for that one. Yeah, thank you. There you go. That's our third place, man. I'll get uh, second place, Sean Condon.
Sean, congratulations. What a race. Coming from the second row of the grid, that battle for second place looked intense. Yeah, no, it was good. It was a bit of fun, actually. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I got a good start in both, you know, the first and the, and the restart. So um, that helped, definitely. Um, obviously, yeah, Tom straight around the first lap. He's just so aggressive. Um, he just pulls, you know. I was just obviously a bit hesitant. Uh, you know, if you're hesitant, you drop behind. It's hard to chase, especially at the front end there. So, but no, I'm really happy with that. It was good um, fun with JJ. Um, I'm, yeah, just super stoked to be up here. That's young fellas for you, hey? They, got no, they don't care about the risk, do they? <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I know, yeah. Definitely with age, yeah, you have to think a little bit more. Oh, well, good, good luck for the night anyway. Another race under lights. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. There you go. That's our second place man. And the winner, the dominant man in this race, Tom Taparis. I mean, a new lap record. That would have put you, I think, 11th place on the Superbike grid. A 31.4 on a 600. Very impressive. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I knew, um, I knew we could do roughly that time all weekend. I've sort of, oh, yesterday and today, my ideal's been about that, so... I'm glad I could pull it out um, first lap, first fly of the race, and then had a bit of a gap and just sort of brought it home. It's, it's kind of gotten a, little, a lot colder in the last little bit, it feels like, and I could sort of feel it sliding around. And uh, yeah, once I had the little leader, didn't need to do anything stupid, so it's brought it home. And what about tonight? Make big changes for the race under the lights? Will it set up was? Not really, actually. We're just going to leave it exactly how it is, I think. Um, I'm sure some guys will play around and soften it off or something for a bit of grip, but I hope it's all right. We'll, we'll get through it, should be good. Well, congratulations and good luck later on. Thanks a lot, cheers. And doesn't Sydney Motorsport Park look absolutely sensational under lights as well? We're getting ready for the second of our Michelin Supersport Championship races. And Jonathan Marlos, the man from Western Sydney, leads the championship. He's with Christopher Mullen. Well, Jonathan, uh, first of all, championship leader at the moment. I mean, Phillip Island, you went there, you never had a, never had a pole position. Pole position, three race wins. What's it like coming to this round as championship leader by, by quite a margin? Yeah, look, it's really good. Uh, it's really uh, confidence uh, filling. Um, yeah, I definitely feel very confident coming into this round. And this track, is it is it very different to Phillip Island in the way you ride, the way you approach it? Is it Does it work for you and your tyres or the other guys have some advantage? Yeah, look, it's very different. Um, uh, Phillip Island's very grippy, flowy, uh, high speed, and yep. he is very, a lot of stop starts and um, a little less grip. Being in my home track, I uh, ride here a lot, so it's, uh, I really enjoy this track. And I started this by saying you are championship leader. The season has started fantastic. What's, what's the goal and what do you think is possible for this round and for the rest of the season? Yeah, look, this round, uh, hoping to uh, keep hoping it on the podium. Yep. Um, the rest of the season, obviously, I want number one. I want, I want the championship, but um, uh, I'm not trying. I'm trying not to focus on that. Uh, it's a long season, so just race by race, session by session, and just focus on that. Well, I wish you all the best. Good luck, Jonathan. Thank you. Well, these bikes are pretty fast too, and uh, they set, as you said before, Steve, a new lap record in race number one. Tom Taparis, when he spoke to Chris on the grid before race one, said he's going around here faster than he has ever been before, so no surprise to see that lap record go. The big question is, can he do it again? And uh, Jonathan Narlos leads the championship. This will be his 15th race in the championship uh, in the Supersport category as well. So uh, he currently leads. He's got three wins to his name, courtesy of that dominant performance at the first round at Phillip Island. Well, it was only a month ago, but uh, plenty of action here this weekend. And uh, only a month to go until the next round of the championship, Steve, where we venture north to Queensland Raceway. Yeah, there's your grid. Tom Taparis on pole with Mark Chiodo in second. Uh, Jonathan Nalas, all the contenders in the championship there. Sean Condon, the veteran, is back. Hayden Nelson, who had that crash earlier on, starts from fifth. And uh, Jake Farnsworth out of six. Championship challenger Ollie Simpson didn't have a good race one. He'll start out of position number seven, along with Corey Snowstall and Tom Bramich in position number nine. Then it's Jack Favell in tenth, Archie McDonald in eleventh. Jacob Hatch in 12th, another rider's coming back from overseas. Corey Turner, multiple Australian sidecar champion. Corey Turner out of position number 13. Jack Mahaffey back from overseas as well in 14th. And Glenn Nelson, one of the hard chargers from Supersport 300, now in Supersport in 15th. Marcus Hammond, Brandon Demery, the two men from Wollongong in 16th and 17th position, doing a great job as well. And a lot of riders, the biggest Supersport field, Steve, that we've seen for many, many years. Also, the uh, most well-credentialed super sport field that we've seen for many, many years. And uh, the first race was a cracker. This one, under lights, is going to be just the same. Some, did you see that? They're looking at Tom Taparis' bike. It looks like it's all OK, though. Someone was, uh, one of the officials was looking at the side of Tom Taparis' bike. Right, red flag is ready to leave the front of the grid. Ready to go racing for the second race for Michelin Supersport. 
Super Sport is go. Look like there's a little bit of movement back on the grid. A great start from JJ Narlos. He will lead them down in towards Sydney.com corner for the first time. Another great start too from Sean Pondon on the dig biz machine. He's been digging up some great starts this weekend. And as they make their way down through Motel and into turn two for the first time to Paris, well placed. Around the outside of Kyoto, he's gone into turn two. The Motel corner so hot. Can he keep it online? He should come out in third position. Yeah, great job by Sean Pondon. Oh, oh, so he goes to Paris. That's Sade and Nelson again. Yep, so Nelson is down on board the 279 machine, the BC Performance bike. He looks like he well, may have got a bit of a helping hand there as he looks around with uh, a look of disgust underneath the, uh, the helmet. I'm sure we'll get a look at that in the Ducati replay later on for sure. So as the field makes their way up through Yamaha corner, it looked like it was JJ Narlos on board. His R6 leading from Tom to Paris. We've got three Yamaha R6s out front. Kyoto is getting beaten up a little bit on this uh, first lap. Looks like he's now dropped back to fifth position. I think Jake, Jake Harnsworth, uh, Farnsworth gave him the big heave-ho as they come up towards turn six. Ollie Simpson now closing in in position number seven, but there's Kyoto on board, the uh, the only Honda at the front of the field, as unfortunately the BC Performance ZX6 of Hayden Nelson is dragged away. Yeah, he doesn't look too happy there, but uh, another great start for Sean Connor, as we have a look at the Ducati replay, he's just on the outside there, tries to tip it in, you can see he's not the first person to go off there, because it's, it's so easy, you're on the gas, you tip in, the front folds and down you go, especially on the first lap like that, when the tyres aren't fully warm. Oh, oh look at that! Was that uh, I think that might have been Jack Mahaffey on board bike number 37 was well and truly off the uh, off the track there on the exit of the final corner. Definitely not trying to get his heart rate back in order as he comes down through Sydney.com corner. Yeah, he won't get a good drive down the straight that time, that's for sure. So it is Narlos that leads by 0.034 of a second over to Paris. A little gap back to Condon, just over half a second. Oh, Marcus Chiato so uh, got the better of uh, Jake Farnsworth on the uh, the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight as well to move back up into a uh, fourth position. Remember a lot of these guys in these early laps. Um, we heard them talking about the Jew and you know perhaps it might not have the same grip. Perhaps some people are going to use different tyres. Some of these guys are going to take one or two laps to figure out the bike they've got underneath them as well. So uh, that is one thing they need to look at. Here's the Ducati replay of Mahaffey is it going off the track there and look at him. He just goes super super wide, holds it pinned as only Jack Mahaffey can. Look at it, he uh, definitely hasn't backed off, uh, manages to hold it, pins it down the straight, and uh, he'd be thinking to himself, I better not do that again. Well, Steve, I've seen it. I still don't believe what I've just seen from uh, from Jack Mahaffey, and now he's trying to charge back around the field, trying to ride around the outside of Corey Snowsill at the hairpin as they come out and head up through Michelin now. Corey Snowsill having another great ride as well. He's uh, one of the guys who probably didn't qualify as well as he would have liked, but he's... Um, get him back into the sport and he's working his way forward through the races every single time he gets on that bike. Good to see. Have a go at that group. It's a mixture of experience and uh, youthful exuberance with uh, Marcus Hamlet in there as well on board bike number 13, the Motor City entry and uh, also uh, you had uh, Jack Mahaffey, Corey Turner in there as well but through Sydney.com corner we go it is already to Paris starting to uh, eke out a small lead but the fastest man on track on the first flying lap Mark Chiodo with a 132 397 on the Honda CBR double R as he makes his way up now onto the other uh, back of the dig biz entry of Sean Condon. Well he did actually nip past him but uh, Condon was so good on the brakes uh, with his Yamaha that uh, he nipped back past uh, in the motor corner so uh, Marcus Chiodo is going okay Looks like this isn't going to be easy to get past it. Well, the one thing about the Honda 2 is it, and you know this well too, Steve, is that it is a very sweet handling machine. And if anyone can carry a lot of corner speed and use that to an advantage, it is Mark Chiodo on board bike number 23. We've seen it before when he challenged for the championship against Ted Collins many years ago. And uh, he's going to have to try and do it again if he wants to get past the, the Yamaha YZFR6, which has been the dominant force in this championship for so, so long now. Unfortunately, Corey Snow still, uh, no wonder he's waking, making his way forward. He got a jump start penalty, so that'll be 10 seconds added onto his time, unfortunately, for him. Tom Bramish looking like he's uh, got rid of the electrical gremlins that have uh, afflicted his weekend so far, and he's moved his way up into a seventh position. He's got Ollie Simpson right behind him, and also is that Jack Favell on board bike number 33? Yes, he is. The addicted to track machine that's also going with Simpson as well. Now, Ollie Simpson is one of the riders that has not done a lot of laps here at Sydney Motorsport Park. 
a lot of riders at the front have taken advantage of racing over the summer series and uh, been doing plenty of uh, plenty of racing. But uh, Ollie Simpson has been here once in the last 12 months, and that was 12 months ago when he came here to race under lights for the first time. Yeah, you've got to remember too, as Jack Favell dives up the inside, nice move there by Jack to do that. Ollie Simpson had a crash, as we saw in the replay um, earlier on, and uh, that's, you know, it could be playing on his mind a little, little bit. Perhaps there's an issue with the bike he's not happy with, but he's obviously not comfortable with something. He just needs to get through this. I mean, it, when we get to tracks that he does know well, like the bend, uh, we're going to see him shine there. But uh, obviously tonight, it looks like he's just going to have to consolidate. Ducati replay yeah, up the inside. Uh, that's a great shot there on that Ducati replay, isn't it, of Favell just coming up the inside. Well, Jack Favell's done a few laps around here at Sydney Motorsport Park too, just quietly. And uh, look behind them, behind Ollie Simpson, you can see Jack Mahaffey and Glenn Nelson. They're starting to close in as well. Those two start uh, engaging in some fisticuffs. And uh, it won't be too long until those two stop and seal machines are right on the back. And speaking of stop and seal machines, a man on a bit of a charge at the moment, just setting his fastest lap of the race, is the rider in sixth position, Archie McDonald, on board bike number 69. He's closing in on the back of Jake Farnsworth's uh, worth that race development uh, machine. So uh, keep your eye on that battle for uh, fifth position. Yeah, uh, Favell hasn't really pulled away too much from uh, Ollie Simpson. Well, plenty, uh, plenty of racing to come in this race. We're only on lap four of the 11-lap race journey. Perfect opportunity to get an update from Chris. Yeah, guys, I'm just down in the pit lane. It's very noisy. The bikes are just going past the straight right now. But um, I've got to tell you, the air feels different. It feels like the dew point's coming up. And I would just came down to have a look at lap times, and they are going about a, a good second slower than they did in the, in the dry. So I reckon conditions are very slippery out there. Um, it's going to be interesting how they manage it and whether that makes tyres tear towards the end of the race because sometimes they, they, they need to use a harder tyre so it will last better in that, when it is slipperier. That's a good point, Chris, and that's exactly what Tom Taparis was hinting at on the grid earlier on. Uh, he said, yeah, some others might go for a softer tyre, but Tom said we're going with the same harder tyre and that's uh, definitely a tyre wear decision. Um, softer in these colder conditions can definitely tear. Well, it's going all right for Tom Taparis at the moment because he's got a 1.8 second lead over uh, JJ Nalos, who's holding down second position. But have a look at that. Behind Nalos, Condon is not going anywhere. And here is that battle I was just talking about. It is Archie McDonald on board bike number 69 that's closing in on the back of Farnsworth. Yeah, it's a bit of a gap back there to Tom Bramich as well, isn't it? He's had a bit of a rough start to the year. He's had a, a knee reconstruction um, in the off-season as well. So uh, it's taken him a little bit of time to find his form. But, uh, you know, he wants to be up dicing with these guys. Uh, Archie McDonald having, you know, a pretty good ride in the 600, though, isn't he? Well, he's going to be extremely bike fit as we get towards the latter rounds of this season, doing a double duty both here in the ASBK and also in the Spanish Championships as well. And uh, clocking up plenty of air kilometres as plenty of, well as plenty of racing kilometres. Look at that battle too. Mahaffey, after that off-track experience, oh, geez, I don't know how he managed to recover from that one, but he's uh, still managing to maintain position on track in eighth position ahead of Ollie Simpson and also uh, Jack Favell. Glenn Nelson uh, rounds out up 11th position with Marcus Hammond in 12th, Corey Snowsell in 13th, Jacob Hatch 14th, and Brandon Demery rounds out that top 15. And there's Nihilus Ni and um, Condon there battling it out with uh, Tom Taparis. Two seconds up the road now. Sean Condon looks up the inside. Can't do it there through the Yamaha Financial Services corner. Well, I think that uh, Nalos is going to be aware that he can't uh, discount Sean Condon. He may be a veteran of the class, but he's also extremely smart and has got great racecraft. And he found that out in uh, race number one earlier on today as they make their way through Tech 5 and down towards the hairpin now. That gap is staying pretty constant. I think uh, Condon is just sitting there, essentially letting JJ do all the donkey work as we head towards the back end of this race. Well, the other thing you forgot to mention about Condon, he's damn fast, very fast. And, uh, you know, like he's um, raced super bikes back in the day, uh, a lot of different experience on different machines at, at a very high level. So um, for him to come back uh, and do what he's doing, I mean, he's a passionate rider. He's really enjoying his racing now. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? So it's uh, good to see him there. Bit of a slipstream for him now. Jonathan Nalos is tucked down between behind the screen. He's right on the back wheel, can dive up, and he does move up. That's a brave move through yep. sydney.com. So Condon back up into a second position. This is the order that they finished in the top three at the completion of race number one. The gap between Nalos and Condon at the flag was 0 0.058 of a second. 
Tom Taparis won the race by 3.3 seconds. He's currently got a lead pushing out to two and a half seconds over this battle for second place at the moment. But here's a Ducati replay of Condon utilising the slipstream to perfection. And as they came down to Sydney.com corner, he just didn't use the brake, Steve, and went straight up the inside and probably took Nalis a little bit by surprise. Yeah, well, I'd say that uh, Condon's done a million laps around this circuit and uh, for sure he used his experience um, uh, to dive up the inside there, knowing that if they both went a little bit wide, there was nothing that Nihilus could do about it. Marchiato still holding down fourth position. There he goes past the Alpine Stars Tech Air 5 uh, signs up towards the uh, the entry back to where the grandstand people can see them here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Yeah. Down through this hairpin, they'll come out through Michelin, take the run up the long back straight. And there, oh, is that Nihilus a little bit wide there on the exit? Uh, nearly took out one of the Michelin signs. Yeah, he's was, was pretty wide there. Um, the other thing that uh, is probably hampering Mark Kyoto slightly is um, he's had a little bit of a, a niggling wrist injury as well, which means he can't really ride the bike the way he wants to. He's been seeing uh, our physiotherapist here, Mark Backway, uh, quite regularly throughout the weekend to try and get that wrist strapped um, so it can just get through the weekend so that he can give it a bit of a rest. Well, JJ Nardos repaying the favour on Sean Condon at the, oh. uh, the end of the straight. Condon, a little bit, uh, a little bit of bike movement there as he came through Sydney.com corner. JJ, I think, will just manage to hang on as they come through Motul now. Yeah, was it, did you see the black line that came off that when he moved? That was uh, that was pretty lucky there. That was uh, out of shape. That could have gone wrong, but uh, he gathered it up. So across the top of the hill we go and down on t into uh, turn four. You can see JJ there giving the uh, the KTEC suspension a serious workout as he makes his way on that fast change of direction. That's where the bike, the chassis and the suspension, they really get put under a lot of pressure. 100%, and especially the front grip there. You need a, all that area there is front grip. If you've got no front grip at that point, you've got no chance at all because you just tip it in and you hope that you've got that grip to carry you all the way to the middle of the corner. You'll see plenty of people lose the front through that section. Well, Michelin Supersport race number two, and it is a Michelin rider in Tom Taparis that currently leads on board the stop and seal machine bike number seven. His fastest lap of the race was a 32.400, only three one thousandths of a second slower than the fastest lap of the race set by Mark Chiodo on board the other uh, Honda CBR 1000 on lap two, the first flying lap of this race. And uh, the current lead is out to 3.5 seconds now for Taparis as uh, JJ is about to uh, experience the to uh, down the inside is Sean Condon once again on board the Digbiz machine, bike number 26 that utilises that slipstream. And JJ's just experienced the, uh, well, the experience once again. Yeah. That is the experience of Sean Condon. To put it into perspective, those guys are doing about 250 k's an hour as they enter that corner. They're hardly backing off at all. 257 to 260 is what these bikes do. Oh, Condon's run wide. Nalis is straight back through. Didn't need a second invitation. And look at the loss of drive there from that small mistake from Sean Condon and how much of a gap that uh, Nalis was able to uh, open up. But then straight away... You can see that he clawed it back. Farnsworth and uh, Archie McDonald now caught up onto the back of Mark Chiodo's Honda CBR 600 as well. Yeah, they're doing some pretty lap, uh, rapid laps, um, Farnsworth and McDonald, both in the 33s, and uh, Marcus a second a lap slower than that. On he, the last lap, there was literally two hundredths of a second yeah. speed between them. Yeah, look, Marcus is struggling big time there right now at the moment. Uh, good drive out of the corners and that, but I think you'll find that it's into the corners where that pain from the wrist is the, the problem. Yeah, I was about to say, I think it's probably the wrist that's starting to uh, slow pain. Marcus down just a fraction now, but he'll grit his teeth and push on through it. That's the kind of guy he is. You can see the, uh, the back end there pumping as well as he comes hard on the gas to uh, take the run up through Michelin through these final corners now. And I think he's at his right wrist, Steve, that he's, uh, that he's hurt. Yeah, which makes accelerating extremely difficult. Well, and braking as well. You're putting yeah. all that pressure through the wrist and you're also trying to brake as well. So you'll be losing a little bit of feeling in that, uh, in that hand. He's about to uh, get slipstreamed by Jake Farnsworth, bike number 49, as uh, oh. Condon tries to go up the inside, but Nalos just says, nope, you're not going through there again. Carries the corner speed through Sydney.com corner. Definitely a lot tighter through there is Condon as well. Up the inside, but the wide line wins there. Runs out wide in the middle. They both take a wide line there. Tom Taparis, you can see him uh, disappearing into the distance there as he goes around turn three. The others are entering it now. 
So Farnsworth up into a fourth position now. Kyoto pushed back to fifth, and I don't think it'll be long before Archie McDonald's going to try and find his way past and make it two stop and seal machines in that top five. Yeah, it'll be a good result for the uh, stop and seal team if uh, Archie can make that move through there for sure. So just a quick recap of that top ten. It is Taparis, Nardles, Condon. We can see them. And then it's this battle between Farnsworth, Kyoto and McDonald. Back to sixth position. Tom Bramich in seventh. Mahaffey in eighth. Ollie Simpson in ninth. And Jack Favell rounding out the top ten with Marcus Hammond in eleventh. Jacob Hatch in twelfth. Glenn Nelson in thirteenth. Corey Snow still fourteenth. And Brandon Demery in fifteenth. Multiple Australian sidecar champion Corey Turner sixteenth. Luke Johnson back there in seventeenth position. Cooper Roundtree in eighteenth. Uh, Hunter Ford in 19th, and Simone Baldrini rounds out the top 20. Yeah, Archie McDonald's getting a little bit desperate now, trying to find a way past Mark Kyoto. He needs to just, like, concentrate on... You're not going to do it there. Work on getting a good drive out of this corner and slipstream him down the straight, and you'll be past him. Oh, big moment there for Farnsworth. Ooh. He was clearly out of the seat as they come onto the straight. He's going to have no drive. In fact, Mark is going to utilise the slipstream to try and blast his way past, but he can't do it. The Yamaha is fast. And around the outside, Archie trying an oh. audacious manoeuvre at Sydney.com corner. Let's see if he pulls it off. Can't quite do it, but he's gone to the inside now. Can't do it. Once again, it is Farnsworth. Late on the brakes. There's an inside manoeuvre there. Can't do it. Kyoto chops it off. Well, this is the final lap, Steve. 3.93 kilometres to go. Well, a bit less than that now because they're already through turn three and down towards turn four they will go. It is Nalo still in second place holding off Condon, but we're focusing on this battle between Farnsworth, Kyoto and McDonald for fourth. Oh, he's down. Oh, Two riders Condon's, down. Condon's down as well. Oh, there's, there's uh, for two riders to go there on the last lap. Oh, they're probably all pushing very, very hard. But this battle between Farnsworth and uh, Mark Chiodo is still on. And this is also going to be a battle for the podium with Sean Condon out of the equation as well. Absolutely. So there is Taparis. There is Nalus. And this battle is for the last place on the podium. It is currently Farnsworth holding off Mark Chiodo. Chiodo, we saw it last time, was... Hopeful of utilising the slipstream and Farnsworth is out of the seat. So what's going to happen as they come up through Michelin and onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight for the final time? Yep, and round he goes. He's good into there. Kyoto, what can he do? Can he drive up the inside? He has a bit of a go. He tries to cut him off. A tight line by Kyoto. Does he get the drive out? We know the MR is good, but it's Tom Taparis who wins again. Tom Taparis takes the win. JJ Nalos will take second. He's happy about that one as well. I don't think Kyoto's going to be able to slipstream Farnsworth to the line. And Farnsworth will take the final podium position. What a recovery from Tom Bramich. He gets back up to fifth position, just getting the better of Jack Mahaffey on that last lap. So Bramich in fifth, Mahaffey in sixth place. And uh, he's at uh, bike number nine. That's Glenn Nelson just pipping... Uh, well, Marcus Hamod just pipping him for a place inside the top ten. Yeah, good job, Marcus. What a race once again from the Michelin Supersport. Two riders going down, Steve, on the last lap. Plenty of pressure being applied. Absolutely. And there's Tom DeBarris. And uh, he, he's just so cool, isn't he? Look at him. He's, uh, he's pretty happy with that, but he just... You know, like, he's got uh, big shoes to fill. He's got uh, a big job to do, and he's doing it. Well, he's doing a pretty good job so far. He missed the first round completely, as I think he might have run out of <laughs> run out of petrol or something there. And he's just managing to roll down the hill, gets the fist pump from his teammate Glenn Nelson on board bike number nine, who eventually secured a top ten position. There's Corey Turner on board bike number 52, making his way back as well. Geez, how tight was that then if he's run out of petrol? Well, he took the victory by 2.952 seconds over JJ Narlos. He doesn't care if he's run out of petrol on the last lap, Steve. Great result there for Tom Taparis. Jake Farnsworth on the podium in third. Mark Chiodo, another fourth for the Honda on board bike number 23. Tom Bramich in fifth. Jack Mahaffey in sixth. Ollie Simpson in seventh. Jack Favelle in eighth. Marcus Hammond takes ninth. And Glenn Nelson rounds out that top ten. Eleventh, Jacob Patch. Good job for him. Corey Snowsill. Uh, with that jump start penalty, got 12th. Uh, Corey Turner in 13th. 14th was Brandon Demery on the Kawasaki 636. Uh, Hunter Ford picks up that last point. Hunter Luke Johnson makes his way through. Noel Mann got some good points uh, there as well in 19th. 20th, Simon Baldrini. Uh, Archie McDonald obviously had that uh, off. And uh, Steph uh, James didn't finish. Neither did Hayden Nelson. Tom Taparis takes the win and he's down in Park May now with Chris along with the top three. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm down here with third place, Jake Farnsworth. That was that was a close race. That was a hard race to the end. Tell us about it. Yeah, it was a little bit tricky, you know, to choose the compound 
uh, for the nighttime racing because when it turns night, you know, the temperature drops dramatically. So it's difference between the yep. afternoon race and the night race. So we took a bit of a gamble on the tyre compound we use, but, you know, my team never fails. And we did such a great race. And I'm so appreciative and thank you to everyone who's helped me. Well, you did a fantastic job as well. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. There you go. Third place, man. At second place, championship leader still, Jonathan Nalos. Great to see you out there. You, you gave it a go. You tried to beat Tom there, but uh, he just still had a bit more pace than you. Yeah, I tried to stick with him, but uh, yeah, he's just on another level. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll work on it. And uh, hopefully if he comes back again, we'll, we can hopefully battle with him. Well, he's still leading that championship, so uh, you lead it into round three. Congratulations. Yeah, leading it, leading it so fast still. So, yeah, super stoked at how this weekend ended up. So, yeah, thank you. Great to see you again. Congratulations, like I said. And our double race winner, the man of the moment, Tom Taparis, new lap record, fantastic race. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, like, stoked. Finally um, did a good week, like, perfect weekend. No crashes with the Stop and Steal team. So, um, yeah, I can't thank everyone from the team enough. Um, yeah, it's been a great weekend so far. Obviously, the lap record was just a cherry on top. So, yeah, again, can't thank everyone enough. Great round, and um, we'll be back for more. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. There, Tom Taparis, the perfect weekend for him. 51 points out of this weekend. Championship points, though. Still sees Jonathan Nalis on 114, the lead from Jake Farnsworth on 85. Tom Bramage on 76. Ollie Simpson on 70 in fourth. Marcus Hammond on 66 in fifth position. Mark Yato on 64 in sixth. Mahaffey in seventh place. Archie McDonald in eighth. Corey Turner in ninth. And Tom Taparis with one round only to his name and a perfect score of 51 points and a lap record. You don't get any points for that, Steve. Rounds out the top 10. Now, the next round, Steve, we haven't got long to wait. 26 to the 28th of April at Queensland Raceway. That is going to be absolutely fantastic. Last year, the racing there was sensational. I expect nothing less than we head there in one month's time. Of course, the next round of Pro-MX is at Horsham on the 7th of April. Not too long to wait for that one either. And then we uh, head off to Gilman after that one in South Australia. But the best news is that uh, with only four weeks or so to go, there's not long to wait until we head to Queensland. Your final thoughts on what has been a great round here at Sydney Motorsport Park. This round never disappoints, does it? It's given us everything. A lot of uh, upset victories and um, a lot of upset losses, but uh, dry, wet. We've had everything here tonight. We've had daylight, we've had dark. Absolutely love coming here, Phil. It's just a brilliant place to be. It certainly is, and a massive thank you once again to Destination New South Wales and the New South Wales Government for their support uh, to bring this event to the people of Sydney, making sure they get world-class motorcycle racing action here in Sydney. That's all from us here at Sydney Motorsport Park. We'll see you in Queensland. Queensland Raceway up next on the ASBK calendar.